This week we are looking at the features of the river's upper course. So last week we looked at the whole of the river um, generally and we looked at the, the basic changes and this week we're going to focus on where the river starts and we're going to, to get a better understanding of the processes and the features of the start of the river, the river's upper course. In order to do this really well, you need to be able to describe all of the features of the upper course. So you need to be able to say what you see, what you're likely to find up there. And then secondly, you need to explain. You need to be able to say how and why the, the processes in the upper course um, work. OK, so this term explain here is, uh, is really, really important, different from describe. First task. As I mentioned last week, we looked at a river as a whole and how it changed from its source to its mouth. First thing I'd like you to do is to draw a spider diagram, or you could draw a list if you don't like spider diagrams, and write down all of the things that you can remember about the upper course. So just the upper course. Give yourself three minutes, pause the video, and in three minutes time, I'll see you again. Welcome back. I hope you um, were able to think and remember all of the uh, the things from about the upper course um, that you could. But if you couldn't remember everything, then don't worry, because we're going to have a quick recap now. This was the first image that I showed you. And in simplistic terms, uh, we split the river up into three different courses and we the upper, middle and lower. And you can see from this diagram that the river is different and the land is different. And in the upper course here, we've got um, very steep land. The land is a steep gradient. We have the source. Now the source is where the river starts. And the river itself is pretty small at this stage, isn't it? It's quite thin and small, certainly if we compare it to what the river is like down here towards the mouth. And why that is um, will become clear in future weeks. We also looked at some of the features, all right? And um, you can see that the features that we find in the upper course are gonna be pretty different to the features that we find in the other two courses. And you can categorize um, what part of the river you're looking at largely by the features and also by the processes that are taking place. So is there erosion taking place? Is there transportation taking place? Is there deposition taking place? So these um, river behaviours or these process, processes uh, are demonstrated here. And again, we're looking at the upper course. Um, we have got a steep valley side. We're looking at a V-shaped valley. We're looking at a small river. Um, and we're looking at a river that does mainly erosion and transportation. So just as a reminder, erosion is the breaking down of material and transportation is the movement of that material. And you can see that as you get further into the middle course and the lower course, the behavior and the, um, the, the um, work of a river changes as you go further down. So first of all, let's tackle these features of the upper course. What are you likely to see in the upper course? Well, the first thing that you need to be aware of is, um, is these, these V-shaped valleys. And um, no prizes for guessing why they are called V-shaped valleys. They are shaped like a V. Um, so why is that? Um, well, firstly, um, Because the river is small and young and not particularly powerful, it can't erode the sides of its banks, but it can erode the bed. It can erode vertically. So it does erode downwards. Now what that does is that leaves all of these banks here susceptible to weathering. And that's exactly what's happening in the second diagram over here. Now weathering, if you can't remember, is the process of uh, material being broken down through elements of uh, the weather. Um, and it tends to happen um, either on a river bank or a cliff face, if you're talking about um, uh, coasts. Um, and the erosion is a, a similar but different um, uh, process and erosion tends to happen underneath the water. So typical weathering that you might find on a bank of a river 
is things like freeze for weathering and I'll show you um, what that looks like in a moment but the good news again is there's lots of transferable knowledge from our coasts topic and freeze for weathering works in exactly the same way on a river as it does in the coasts. Now once this material has been um, weathered and weakened we start to see mass movement occurring and mass movement simply means the, the falling of this material from the riverbank that's been loosened, that's been damaged into the river. And you can see that this has happened down here. Now there's a couple of different ways um, that this happens. First of all, there's soil creep, um, which just means that the, uh, the, the loosened material is going to be creeping into um, the, uh, the river. That's supposed to be an arrow. That's not very good, is it? Um, and, uh, and secondly, rock falls. So larger pieces of rock um, might be weathered, weakened and end up in the riverbank here. Now this material is going to eventually be transported down the river to the middle course and the lower course where it's going to be deposited. But back up in the upper course all we've got here left over is a V-shaped valley. Now as promised um, we've got, oh sorry my um, oh, my uh, drawings are on there so let's see if we can erase those. Um, as mentioned uh, threes four weathering is a typical form of weathering that you're likely to find and simply all that's going to happen is uh, water is going to collect in a crack or a joint. Now when this water freezes um, when water freezes it expands so um, when that process takes place the joint is going to widen like so. Um, now the water is going to thaw eventually and the process is going to continue and happen over and over again and as you can see in diagram three the crack has gotten wider um, and over time this breakage as you can see in diagram four is going to result in a totally um, damaged piece of rock and uh, just a photograph of this happening um, again I will get rid of my previous scribbling Um, what you've got here is a crack. Um, now um, that is going to be filled with water. That water is going to freeze eventually. The crack is going to widen and eventually you're going to see this piece of rock here making its way into this river where it's going to be transported downstream um, and it's going to be deposited on the banks of rivers uh, possibly forming um, either a beach meander or a delta, something like that. Now the other feature that you might be able to see or you are likely to see in the upper course of a river is a waterfall. So this one um, is taken, uh, this photograph is taken from Sri Lanka, uh, the Sri Lankan highlands and obviously very very beautiful and lots of people are drawn to uh, these um, these tasks, sorry these, um, uh, these river features, good tourist um, attractions and they are created in the following way. Now in order for a waterfall to occur you have to have hard rock layered over soft rock and eventually um, there would have been soft rock uh, over here uh, but because the force of the water erodes the soft rock quicker than the hard rock um, this soft rock ends up moving into this direction. Now Because the water is continuing to flow and it's continuing to erode um, and it's already eroded some of the soft rock, um, it continues to flow over this hard rock slab and it erodes the soft rock underneath and this soft rock, or this, the force of the water falling creates what we call a plunge pool. So you can see here down at the bottom the erosion is more so or, or, or more evident than in the rest of the river. Now what's also going to occur is this soft rock um, being very soft is going to erode more quickly than the hard rock and eventually it's not going to be able to support the hard rock that we've got up here and what you will tend to find is that this um, slab is eventually going to fall off and there's going to be lots of debris at the bottom of this plunge pool and that's going to continue um, again and eventually you will see the whole waterfall moving backwards. 
and that will create what we call a gorge. So a gorge is essentially um, a, uh, a, a waterfall which has got steep sides um, to the um, side of the river. Now the processes, again, I've used the terms erosion, transportation and deposition. Um, and so I am going to remind you of what they are. Because there's mainly erosion going on in the upper course, I'm going to focus on that. And when we talk about the middle and lower course, I'll talk to you about uh, deposition and transportation. Again, there's some good news here in that the processes are not different from what you've already studied in coasts. So hydraulic action is simply the force of the water breaking down the banks of the river. Now what hydraulic action also does is forces air into these cracks um, and um, as the air has nowhere else to go it's forced deeper into the crack um, and widens the crack even more. Abrasion. Uh, abrasion is a uh, posh word for basically a graze. So Remember, if you fall off your bike and you graze your elbow uh, badly, then you might have to go to hospital and they might say there's a, an, abrasion, an abrasion, um, on the on the elbow. So all that's happening is um, these big rocks at the bottom are being scraped along the riverbed through the force of the water. And as they're doing that, they're damaging the bottom of the riverbed. Solution, um, floating in the middle of nowhere here, uh, it simply means the chemicals in the water eating away at the rocks and the riverbed itself. And attrition um, simply means the uh, smaller rocks, smaller particles getting picked up by the water and knocking into the, each other. And every time they do that, they weaken and they get slightly smaller. So, what I hope you could be able to do from this PowerPoint is describe the features of the upper course of the river. So you should be able to describe what a V-shaped valley is and a waterfall and explain the processes at play. So you should be able to explain how a V-shaped valley and a waterfall has been created. And you should be able to explain how uh, erosion works in the upper course of a river. I hope you find it helpful. Again, any questions, please ask your class teacher. Thank you very much.